Have you ever loved someone so much that you threw acid in their face? Have you ever been so desperate to be loved that you married them after they threw acid in your face? No, right? That's because you're not Bert and Linda Pugash, the central characters in the most ass-backward love story you'll ever hear. Hi, I'm Chris. Thanks for watching True Crime Recaps. The Mr. and Mrs. called this a storybook romance. The rest of the world called it the craziest crime of passion in New York history. And it all started as a good old-fashioned meet-cute. It was one of those crisp September days in New York. The year was 1957. You couldn't have asked for a more picturesque setting. Bert Pugash was strolling through a park in the Bronx when he saw her sitting on a bench. Linda Riss, a beautiful girl with skin like velvet and big brown eyes. Bert had to have her. But she was way out of his league. She's a gorgeous 20-something. He's a less attractive 30-something. And she told the New York Times she thought he was a nut. But he was confident, persistent, and richer than anyone she'd ever met. She should have stuck with her first impression. Bert did well for himself. He had a successful career as a negligence lawyer, and he wasn't shy about spending his money. He owned his own plane and a swanky powder blue Cadillac. He invested in a hot nightclub, the movie business, and real estate. And he rubbed shoulders with the who's who of New York City at the Copacabana. His flashy lifestyle made him popular with the ladies, and he took full advantage. He was a womanizer and proud of it. Now he had his sights on Linda, and he never took no for an answer. The man was slick. He had all the lines, all the charm to lure any woman he desired, and she agreed to go out with him. And after their first date, she came home to find a dozen red roses with a note reading, Love from Bert. He wined and dined her at the finest clubs across the city. She met all his celebrity friends, and the band struck up a rendition of Buddy Clark's Linda whenever Bert took her to his club. She thought she landed the hottest ticket in New York, and when he proposed, she answered with a resounding yes. But Bert had a secret. He was already married with a daughter living with a severe learning disability. When Linda found out she was the other woman, she was crushed and called off the wedding. But Bert swore up and down that he would leave his wife for her. And 24 hours later, he returned with divorce papers to prove it. But they were fake, and Linda could tell. She told him they were over and hoped that would be the last of it. If only that was true. Somehow, he conned Linda into taking him back, but... His wife Francine talked her out of it. She vowed she would never give Bert a divorce. It would be like a get-out-of-jail-free card, and Francine wasn't about to let him marry his mistress. Linda took her at her word and struck up a romance with a man named Larry Schwartz. That's when the threats began. If Bert was a flamboyant man about town, then Larry was the exact opposite. He was a quiet 23-year-old working a modest job as a salesman in the uniform rental business. That was okay with her. She didn't care about the money. She just wanted to love and be loved back. But Bert's jealousy quickly blossomed into obsession. He sent her constant letters. For six months, he would threaten her and she would go to the police only to be told they couldn't help her. When he found out she was engaged to Larry, Bert called her up to say, If I can't have you, no one will. And when I'm done with you, nobody will want you anyway. The very next day, on June 15, 1959, Linda's doorbell rang. A man was standing on the other side saying he had a package for her, an engagement present from an anonymous sender. She reached out her hands, but the delivery man threw lie in her face. Acid scorched her eyes and burned her hair. She went blind in one eye and lost most of her sight in the other. After months in the hospital, she was left traumatized with scars across her forehead and cheek. She told Larry if he wanted to leave, she wouldn't hold it against him. He took her up on that. The engagement was off, and Linda knew Bert was behind everything. He made good on his promise. But if you asked Bert about it, he would tell you the delivery man improvised. The lie was never part of the plan. The guy was a career criminal by the name of Herd Harden. He claimed he paid him $2,000 to beat up Linda, but the hired muscle took it a step further with the acid. Since Bert was a rich, respected lawyer, it took police four months to drag him and his accomplice to jail for the attack. But 
The circus was just starting. His time in court was another spectacle. They held two separate trials for the celebrity lawyer. Doctors declared Bert insane three times, but the court overruled all three diagnoses. Next, he slid his wrists with the lenses from his glasses, crying, Linda, I need you. Linda, I love you. Linda, I want you. The wounds weren't serious, and the trial continued as planned. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Linda said she hoped he rotted in there. With him behind bars, she took off for Europe, hoping to meet a man that didn't grimace at her disfigurements. And she always wore big black sunglasses to hide her eyes and a wig to cover her scars. She met a man she was keen on marrying, but he eventually took off too. And she felt doomed to walk this world alone, and the only man that still showed interest was Bert. The universe did everything it could to separate Bert and Linda, but affairs, acid, blindness, and jail weren't enough to keep them apart. Bert wrote to her constantly from prison, professing his love for her while regretting his crimes. He asked his lawyer if there was anything she needed. Her response? Money. Bert sent her $50 every week until he left jail. After serving 14 years behind bars, he walked out a free man and continued his campaign to win her back. And by that time, Linda thought of herself as damaged goods. The acid and the years had taken what remained of her eyesight and her flawless beauty. Just as Bert had promised, no one except him wanted her. They got married only months after he left prison. The headlines read, Blinded bride-to-be weds attacker. Even the tabloids were shocked. Bert and Linda's married life was a long string of interviews, headlines, and scandals. He found work as a paralegal having been stripped of his law license in the early 60s. But the unlikely couple wasn't hurting for money. He used what he still had to invest in stocks, and the two of them eventually amassed a fortune worth millions. But this time around, he didn't spend it on planes and flashy cars. After his stint in prison, he developed an insatiable appetite for fighting corruption in the New York justice system, claiming all New York lawyers were crooks who betray their kind. But Bert wasn't exactly walking the straight and narrow himself. And what's that old saying about a leopard never changing its spots? The next big scandal hit in 1997 when he stood trial for harassing and assaulting a woman named Evangeline Borja, his Filipino secretary and mistress. They had an affair for five years, but when she tried to break up with him, he allegedly threatened to kill her. Considering his track record, she believed him and pressed charges for assault. He represented himself at trial and called Linda to stand as a character witness, and she was happy to oblige. The wife he had blinded decades earlier told the court he was a wonderful and caring husband. Ultimately, he was found guilty on one count of second-degree harassment and sentenced to 15 days in jail. The trial forced Bert and Linda back into the limelight, not that they ever really left, sparking renewed interest in their strange love story. In the mid-2000s, a filmmaker named Dan Clores approached Bert and Linda about making a documentary about their life. They weren't interested initially, but a cushy check might have changed their minds. The film, Crazy Love, debuted at Sundance in 2007, drawing mixed reviews from critics. Six years later, in 2013, Linda died of heart failure, leaving 86-year-old Bert to care for himself. But even after Linda's death, Bert couldn't keep himself out of the headlines. Before too long, his name was at the center of yet another scandal. In 2016, he met Shaman Sheila Frawley, an attractive at-home nurse who claimed she fell in love with him, despite the fact that he was a man 43 years her senior. Once again, Bert's wallet helped him land the girl. Before meeting Bert, Sheila was happily married to William Frawley, an ex-NYPD veteran. They had four children together, and their oldest son followed in his father's footsteps. But... William harbored a deep personal secret. He was gay and had struck up an affair with another man in 2014. He came out to his wife in 2015, but the two didn't divorce. Instead, they separated but remained amicable. That's when she met the soon-to-be-dead millionaire at a restaurant in Queens. Bert, ever the womanizer, fell head over heels for Sheila. But as randy as he was, his health was quickly failing and he needed a caregiver. So, Sheila assumed the role. He depended on her for everything, from clothing and household chores to medicine and meals. 
All the while, Bert was smitten by Sheila's beauty. It reminded him of Linda and how much he missed her. After she died, Bert changed his will over and over. His daughter was also dead, so he gifted his millions to different friends and associates. But the bulk of his fortune was supposed to go to the charity he and Linda had started for the visually impaired. Then, in the fall of 2020, he changed it one final time. Just months before his death, he signed his entire $15 million estate over to Sheila. On Christmas Eve 2020, at the age of 93, Bert joined Linda in whatever afterlife he believed in. And like the will reading seen in Knives Out, all eyes were on Sheila when they learned Bert left everything to her. But she didn't get to collect the cash. Lawsuits and foul play allegations flooded the New York courts. Bert's closest friends believed Sheila starved him to death once he updated his will. But Sheila's lawyer barked back saying Sheila didn't do anything wrong. She genuinely loved Bert despite the age difference and she was the only one he trusted to the bitter end. Bert's friends were just upset they didn't get their millions. In the end, all the drama and finger pointing were enough for a judge to freeze Bert's assets while the legal system played out. As of July 2022, Bert's fortune remains in legal limbo while lawyers argue back and forth over who's entitled to his millions. Looks like even after death, there's no getting Bert out of the limelight. And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.